Hi guys. Okay, we're still working with systems today. We've been doing systems of equations for probably a month now. Um, systems are when you're going to use a system when you have more than one variable that you're trying to solve for. So this year we're solving for two variables. Um, but now we're going to be solving not equations, but inequalities, systems of inequalities. And remember, inequalities are your less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to symbols, your little alligators, right? Um, so we're going to practice that today, and we're, we're going to split this up into two lessons. Hopefully today is nice and kind of light. But there are a few things I want you to add to your notes just so your brain can kind of organize systems of equations versus systems of inequalities, okay? So systems of equations, so equal sign, can be solved by, and there were three ways that I taught you to solve systems of equations. The first way I taught you was by graphing. So you would graph the two lines and then wherever those two lines intersect is your solution. So if they cross at like, you know, negative five comma three, then your solution is negative five comma three. X is negative five, three is for Y. Okay, Y equals three. So that was the first way. Graphing is not always the best though. It doesn't always give you the exact answer if you have non-whole number answers. So I taught you another way, which was substitution. And that's uh, where you do a lot of plugging in and replacing so that you can eventually solve for X and Y. That does give you the exact answer. I tend to like this third way a little bit better, which was elimination. Okay, elimination is where you can't solve the X's or the Y's and you solve for one at a time. So um, these are all ways to solve systems of equations, but we're not doing equations today, we're doing inequalities. So you're gonna make yourself a little note about that. Systems of inequalities can only be solved by there's actually only one way that you can solve a system of inequalities, and that's going to be by graphing. Okay, that's the only way. So equations got many ways to solve. Inequalities, inequalities just have so many possible answers that you can't list all the answers. So you use a graph to show all the possible answers. Okay. So we have graphed single inequalities before in my class. It was towards the end of trimester two. Um, so I'm, I'm going to kind of hope that you remember some of that stuff. If not, you'll catch on this week. But um, we are going to remind ourselves of some important things about when we graph inequalities. So um, we're going to make a little chart in our notes. It's going to have four columns. And what do I have? One, two, three, four, five, five boxes down. Okay, set up that little chart, hit pause, and then um, hit play when you're ready. But here are your main inequalities, um, less than sign. Remember, I my little trick for remembering which one's which is this symbol right here is like a tilted L. So it's my less than, okay? And then we got greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. So fill in your little chart, okay? Now, um, there is a difference when we go to graph a line, there's a difference between a solid line and a dashed line. Hopefully that sounds a little familiar. Do you remember which ones are solid and which ones are dashed? These two that don't have the or equal to line, 
If they don't have the or equal, it means it can't be equal. So we put a dashed line there to show that it's not, not everything on there is a solution. So those are gonna be dashed. So I'm just gonna write dashed on these. Okay, which means if it has the or equal to sign, it's gonna be a solid line. And that tells us that everything on that line is a possible solution. So solid, solid, okay. And then the symbol also tells us something else. It tells us about the line, but it also tells us where to shade. And if you remember, when you graph inequalities, you're either gonna shade above the line or below the line, depending on the symbol. So the ones that say less, they make little L's. These two say less than. Those are gonna be shaded below, okay? Okay, less than symbols are shaded below, lower. And then your greater than symbols are shaded above. Okay. And then the last thing we're gonna do in this little box is just kind of give ourselves a visual. So um, I'm gonna draw my lines first, so dash. So I'm just gonna draw just a dashed line. This one's dash. Solid, solid. Okay, so for a strictly less than, we got a dashed line and it's shaded below. So you would take your pen or pencil and you would literally shade everything below that line, okay? Above or greater than, shaded above. So anything higher than that line is a possible solution. Less than or equal to, we have the solid line, meaning anything on that line is a possible solution, as well as anything below that line. Greater than or equal to, anything on the line is a possible solution, as well as anything above it. Okay, hopefully that looks a little familiar. Now, the only difference is instead of doing a single, instead of graphing a single inequality, now we have two because we're working with a system which has two inequalities. So we're going to do just one example in your notebook, and then I'll show you a few on Delta Math so you can kind of go, oh yeah, okay, this is fun. Okay, so we'll do one example in your notebook, meaning you only have to draw one graph, okay? Okay, so here's our system. Y is, and instead of equals, we're gonna have the little alligators, okay? Y is less than or equal to X minus one. So that's your first inequality. Second inequality is Y is greater than negative one third X minus three, okay? And how we show that's a system is we group them up with that little squiggly thing. Shows that they're working as a team, okay? Now, like I said, inequalities, because they're not exactly equal, right? If you think about x equals five instead of x is less than five, there's a lot of numbers that are less than five. There's only one number that is five. So inequalities kind of open you up to lots more possible solutions, okay? And we, it's not that we're going to say infinite solutions on every single answer. Really, there is no final answer. There is just going to be a shaded area. So I'm going to explain this first, and then we'll do it. What's going to happen here is we're going to graph this line, solid dash, shade above and below. We're going to graph this line, solid or dash, shade above and below. And wherever the shading overlaps, that is your solution area, okay? Wherever the shading overlaps, that is your solution area. So we are going to draw ourselves a nice and pretty graph, do the best you can. Um, this is gonna be kind of lower on the graph, so I'm not gonna go very high with my graph. Where's my X, Y? Okay. 
Okay. So let's go ahead and graph that first inequality. We always start by plotting our point at our y-intercept. That's the number at the back. Y-intercept is negative one, so I plot a point at negative one on the y-axis. Then I use my slope to tell me how to move. There's no number in front of x, so my slope is one, positive one. So we should have a line going upwards since it's positive. So we're gonna go up one, right one, up one, right one. You can also go down one, but you have to go left one, down one, left one. Notice how that's still in the positive direction. Okay, so you get a ruler or something with the straight edge next to you. And when we go to graph it, you have to be so careful that you look at whether it should be solid or dashed. So I'm just gonna tell myself right now, this has an or equal to on it. It's gonna be solid, okay? I'm also going to tell myself whether it should be shaded above or below. This is a less than symbol, so I'm going to be shading below here. Okay, so I take my ruler, I get to draw a solid line. And notice how I extend my line kind of throughout the whole graph. I don't make a little short stubby line. Extend your line out. Okay, then we go, oh, I forgot to shade we get to shade below. So I'm just gonna lightly shade below because I don't wanna confuse myself later. So that's my advice is just lightly shade. Here's what this means so far. Anything in this area is not a solution to the whole system because our solution area has to work for both this inequality and this inequality. So right now, anything in here could be a possible solution. Okay, but we still have to graph this second equation to see where it falls and where its solutions are. So let's graph that second um, inequality. So my um, y-intercept is negative three. Plot a point at negative three on the y-axis. My slope is negative one-third, so make sure that you have a line that's descending. It's going down one, right three. You could also go up one, but you'd have to go left three, okay? Now this one, before I go to draw my line in, gotta be careful on this one. This is going to be a dashed line because it's strictly greater. It cannot be equal to the things on the line. So we have to do a dashed line. And that does say greater, so we are gonna shade above, above that line. So here we go. Line it up, and then instead of doing solid, you just do little dashes. Okay, so it's kind of like a boundary line. What that tells me is anything on that line, any point on that line is not going to be a solution. It has to be above that line. So I'm going to lightly shade above that line. Okay, now here's where it can kind of get messy. Your final solution area has to be where the shading overlaps. And hopefully you can see it okay on this video. But I had some, you know, purple above this line. And then this orange section was below this first line that I drew. So our solution area has to work for both. It's got to be above the purple line, but below the orange line. So you look to see where your over where your shading overlaps. And for us, that's going to be right in here. So once you see where the shading overlaps, you're going to darken that shading. Okay, make it dark. So that's my final solution area. Notice that that area in blue is above the purple line, but below the orange line. And that's exactly what we had up here. It has to be less than x minus 1 but greater than negative one third x minus three, okay? Now, there are so many possible solutions in here. Like for example, um, this would be a possible solution because it lands in the blue area. This would be a possible solution because it lands in the blue area. This would be a possible solution. This would be a possible solution. This, 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 this. And even this, because it's on the solid line solid line works. We couldn't have this as a possible solution, um, zero comma negative three, because 
it's on a dashed line and dashed line means stay off. Okay. So um, many, many solutions. So a lot of times I'll ask you, those math will ask you, but also I will on a test. Just give me a possible solution. And that means you are looking into the overlapped area where the shading overlaps and you're just giving me one point that lives in there. Okay, so for example, we could use um, three comma one, right? Three one would work. So possible solution, three one. Okay, now something we should talk about though, while we're here is how to do a check, okay? Because a lot of times I get kids who are like so careful with their graphing, but maybe they do one thing wrong. Maybe they shade above when you really should have shaded below. And that's gonna screw up your whole answer, okay? So what I recommend doing, especially if it's a test, is check your possible solution, okay? What I mean is plug in X for X, plug in Y for Y and see if it comes out as a true statement, okay? But it, got, it has to come out as a true statement on both, okay? If we plug it in here and it works, we plug it into the second one and it doesn't work, well, then it's not a solution, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, y is less than or equal to X minus one. Y is greater than negative one third X minus three. So let's check those. Let's take our solution three, one. I'm gonna plug in three for X, one for Y, and I'm gonna drop down the other stuff. Three for X, one for Y, I'm gonna drop down the other stuff. Okay, here we go. I see one is less than or equal to three minus one. Well, three minus one is two. And this says one is less than or equal to two. Do you agree that one is less than or equal to two? Yeah, one is less than two, okay? This other one, I need to kind of clean up the right side. We got some multiplying here. Negative one third times three. If you multiply that, that would be negative three over three, which simplifies to negative one. And then if we simplify that side down, negative one minus three is negative four. So what we have here is one is greater than negative four. Yeah, positive one is greater than negative four. It's true on both. So yes, our, our um, possible solution works. And what that tells you is it makes you feel secure in your final shaded area, okay? Okay, so that's that's really about it. Graph each line, solid or dash, shade above and below, and wherever the overlapped shading area is, that's your solution area. So I'm going to take you through just a few examples on Delta Math, and then you'll practice, okay? Okay, thanks, guys. Okay, let's look at some Delta Math examples just so you can see how it works on here. So I'm going to start with the first inequality. Y is less than negative x plus 5. I plot my intercept at five on the y-axis. Slope right here is negative one, so I go down one, right one, boom. Then it's gonna give you these little pop-ups to change the line from solid to dash. This one, it's strictly less, so it has to be a dashed line. And then we get to figure out the shading. So that is a less than symbol, so we're gonna shade lower, below the line, okay? So that one's done. Now I get to um, graph the second inequality. So the second inequality has an intercept at negative one and the slope is positive two. So I'm gonna go up two, right one, okay? And um, for the line, it needs to be solid because it has the or equal to on it. And for the shading, this is also less than, so it needs to be down in this area. It needs to be below. So notice it has two kind of colors there for each, each line. So now look to see where your shading is overlapped. It's overlapped in this region right here. So you're gonna be asked to be get, you're gonna have to give a possible solution down here. And as long as it lives in this area, 
you'll be fine. So like, for example, we could do right here, this is two comma zero, two comma zero. That lives in the solution area, so it should work. Okay, and if you would have picked three comma zero, that would have worked. If you were to pick four comma negative seven, that would work. Negative one comma negative nine, that would work. See, many, many types of answers. As long as it's in the shaded area, you're good. You're good. And it'll tell you right here, many other possible answers. Okay, um, I'll do one more, but I think you guys get it, hopefully. So intercept is at negative one, down two, right one. That is a solid line and it's greater. So we got a shade above. Okay, second inequality has an intercept at two, slope of positive one. And that one's also a solid line and it's also shaded above. There we go. So each one shaded above, each one has a solid line. So I'm looking for anything, something right in here. So I'm just gonna go right here, boom, six. Um, that'd be zero comma six. Once again, that's not the only correct answer, but anything in here would work, including points on both of these lines. Both of these have solid lines. So you could actually pick a point, one of these, that's in the solution area and on the line, it would work, okay? All right, I'm gonna call that good for today. Um, try out a few examples on Delta and see how you do, okay? Thanks, guys. Yeah.